So I have here a 461 cylinder that someone tried to put a thread insert into and boogered it up pretty bad. It's at a pretty bad angle. Um, this is a repair that I do quite often. Um, either after someone screws up the threads or they screw up a thread insert, they'll send it to me and I'll weld it up and repair this. First step is to actually get this insert out, which the, the best way to do that is just to uh, take a carbide burr and, and slit it until I just start to see the threads and then on two sides and then knock it in and push it out. So I'll do that here. So I've just used a, a luma hog to, to first kind of take a skim cut of all the of all the plug thread there or all the thread that was left just to get rid of it all. That kind of gives me my minimum bore. And then I use it to, to fillet all everything back to where I can actually maybe get the TIG torch. Where you can actually get the TIG torch down in there to, to get the rest. And I found I can leave maybe about a 16th to an eighth of an inch. I mean, none of this really has to be pretty. We're gonna weld it all in. But I can leave a 16th to an eighth of an inch of it, uh, still a straight bore right at the end. And I can use heat and kind of a little drip method to to push the, the filler material back over that last little bit. As you can see, I've already bead blasted this whole cylinder to you. Try to remove any any stuff, or and I, I cleaned it before that. Got all the oil off of it, e blasted it. Try to get all the impurities off of it as possible. Before I go welding these things, I always drop a slip in them. I mean, this is just a an old pop can, but uh, really like a piece of like 24 gauge steel works best. But a pop can or a beer can or whatever you got will work in a pinch. You might want to burn some of the some of the paint off of it first but we'll slip that in there to protect the bore that way if we accidentally when we're welding this if we drip too much in it doesn't stick to the bore doesn't screw stuff up so when i weld these i always put the cylinder on an insulator and i use they call it like a welder's helper or a third hand or a finger there's multiple different names for these but basically i'm going to use one of these little kind of hold downs to create the ground and that way I can determine where it's going to create the ground arc because wherever you do that it always messes up the surface a little bit and I don't want it to like ground out on this gasket surface because that would mess that up so I'm going to control where that happens with this and keep the thing insulated otherwise another thing I do is I always try to work at this top side uh, it seems that if you start over here and work your way around, it's a lot easier than starting here. Because if you start here, then this, this weld starts messing up with your other one. Um, the, the thing to note about doing this is you always want to get your weld 360 degrees around that whole base before you try to start closing in the hole. You always want to establish that, that weld all the way around so that you try to get good adhesion on the chamber side and you don't have to come back in and blend too much or add more filler because adding filler from the chamber side is a pain because we're going to do things a little bit differently than how you normally would well, like a stack of dimes weld we're going to heat up that bottom edge and we're going to use the torch heat to drip in the the filler material so we'll we'll heat it up in that bottom edge and then maybe lift the torch up just a little bit to get that to get that filler material hot and get it to wick in to where we have it hot and then we'll bring the torch angle back and blow it down towards the edge and that will that'll get us a nice protruded weld towards the bottom it's completely counterintuitive anything you ever welded or everything kind of flat welding you do but this is this is more of a build up or a crack filling type of method okay so i have some 40-43 eighth inch filler I'm going to be using. I have a number six gas collet. I've used gas lenses for this kind of stuff in the past, but you can see the collet is a little bit 
a little bit smaller, it gets in there a little bit easier. Uh, the 16th tungsten, we got the welder set at about 70%. AC balance, so I like using really high frequency. It keeps my arc nice and tight, so it's set at 150, 150 hertz. And this machine does 200 amps, and I'm just gonna throw it all at it, because if you need it, you need it now, and if you don't, well, you can throttle it down. Essentially, I've welded a little over 270 maybe, and we're going to pick this up and bring it back around that corner and, and keep trying to push that material down in, and then I can start filling it. See how it's all protruding down in there. We got a pretty bulbous thing on this side, on the top side here. But we can reach down in with a long thing and get that later. So while this thing's still hot, I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish this bad boy off. overheated it a little bit. 1 16th is a little small for the amperage, but I like it. Okay, so I have a fresh blue, which is a 2% lanthanated, I believe, tungsten here with, I don't know, 3 8 stick out. We're going to go ahead and finish this thing off. Hopefully the R starts will be a little bit better. If not, we'll power for it. Starting a uh, good starting bit to get the threads nice and nice and started, and then we'll face it all back down. So, so I've switched over to the super secret blend door setup, which is a, a gas. It's actually a gas lens with this 5XXL cup that you can get. I've switched over to. Uh, 330 seconds tungsten on here with a little bit of a round off on that because uh, when you start pouring this much amperage through it, it has a tendency to burn the tip off. So, to blend the chamber, you usually have to throw a lot of heat at it. And we're going to really just try to push all that material back down in and around and get it blended out as much as we can with the torch. That way, we don't have to do so much grinding at the end. So, like I said, I've used an excessive amount of amperage to blow all that material down in and create mm, kind of what the chamber should look like. After <clears throat> some grinding with the, roughing it with the Lumahog, maybe a little bit with the regular SE, I think that's a 51. A little blending with this guy. 
cross buff with a little bit of just like a patch of 80 grit over it. And then finally with this guy, I'm using a little brake cleaner to clean up any chaff. We get something kind of like that for the chamber. The next step will be taking this thing to the other shop where I have my mill where I can shoot the hole back through it. So you can see I got a big aluminum plate clamped into the vise here with holes drilled in it to hold the cylinder down. This creates a really nice consistent way to, to bolt them down plus really rigid. So first thing to do is to line up with the big end mill so you can get it estimated where you're going to shoot the hole down through it, zero off, and then uh, put a flat on it so you get a nice consistent surface to get the to get the tap to start on. So I first shoot a 3 8 hole and then come back in with a 3 flute, uh, three flute half inch end mill, put a little WD-40 on there and that way it cuts a really nice nice consistent hole and that way it's not having to knock the center out at the same time you can get a true half inch hole so now it's time for tapping we got the, the floating head in we're gonna use back gear to go nice and slow There's the finished plug thread pretty much. Don't forget to chamfer the first thread. Make it easier to start. Have a nice tight plug fit. So here's the finished product. I'll go ahead and use a little ball burr and chamfer back that thread a little bit that's exposed and it's good to go.